question, how are you doing? I hope you're really, really well. I've come on a bit early just to check my sound to make sure um, it sounds okay. So if you are online, please let me know if my sound is okay. I hope you've had a brilliant week so far. And of course, it's a mile out Wednesday. Roxy, tell me, please, how's my sound, girl? Is it alright? Oh, yep. Liz and Karen, I hope you're doing really well. So, we can do the show on Monday. Oh, isn't it a blast? It's absolutely brilliant. It did so well. Hi, Harold. Oh, my Helen, I'm good. The sound is really bad. Any better? I don't know what it would be. Right, let's have a look. Sounds like rain again. What is that? Right, I've taken my mic off. Any better? Hmm. Sorted! Yes! We're there! Well done! Woo! I knew I'd get there in the end. So today I'm going to create a canvas. Thanks Liz, thanks Karen, thanks Roxy. Ah, oh, so Sarah, thank you darling. Thanks Hells. Oh, I knew my girls would have my back. Hi Maxine, hope you're really well. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a canvas today, but I'm going to do a bit of painting, I'm going to do a bit of mixed media. I'm going to be using the beautiful coincidental um, collection of papers. I'm also going to be using the, um, oh, what have I done with it? The compass stamp, if you've got that. Um, I'm going to be using a couple of stamps as well from the chapter 12. So I'm going to be using the lighthouse and the seashells. Right, shall we start? Everyone ready? Okay, let's go. So first things first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I've done to the canvas. So let me turn you around. I've made a right mess on the table today. But basically it's an A4 canvas, but I'll turn you around, you can see, all right? Here we go, hold on, it minds at me if it's not the right way. No, that's not it. Let's pull you up a bit higher. There, right, A4 canvas, okay? And what I've done is I've already added a bit of ink work using my old paper, using tumble glass, these are all distress inks. And I've done a bit of stenciling and a bit of spritzing as well with some twinkle spray. I've started doing some stenciling here, again, using the fantastic brand new Imala stencils. If you didn't manage to get hold of them, there are a few left on Tony's website, so pop along there and have a look. So this is gonna be my base. But before I start that, I'm going to add some of these most delicious papers. Now, when you get this paper collection, it is so hard to choose. That's why, oh, you know, that's why I didn't make them double-sided, because I hate the pain of being that I have to use one side and not the other. So, really, with these, I'd multiple buy if you love them as much as I do. So I've just put a black uh, mat on the reverse of this, just so it's all lovely and tidy. I'm going to take another slice of that beautiful paper again. And even though that little bit is actually the top of the lighthouse, you won't see that. So I'm actually going to pop this down like this. So I'm just using some foam pads. Now, if you see my post earlier, saying about this today and i'm going to do that just on a little bit of a jaunty angle there we go um if you see my post earlier yes you can win something today and do you know what it is you can win this project that i'm creating right now so i'm going to pop this to the side for a second and i will do loads more work on that in a minute but right now i want to come to the beautiful stamp the compass stamp now it's one of my key favorite stamps i absolutely love it and i've stamped it and i've started doing a bit of color work using um gossip markers because they're brilliant they're absolutely brilliant i've gone round the edges i'm just going to grab my inks here we go and i'm just going to pick up a little bit of peacock feather just like so 
got some scrap paper here as well so I'm just going to dab off my sort of excess if you like and then I'm just going to pull that round now even I've matte and layered that it really doesn't matter because it's the distress oxide it will go over both layers but what it does is just by adding that little darker layer on top of the old paper green it just draws your eye in so much more. You can see that I'm using the brilliant blenders from Stamps By Me as well. Then what I'm gonna do very simply is I'm gonna flick some water using my fan brush, one of my favorite techniques. And I'm just gonna do it around the edge. Not too much, I don't wanna oversaturate it, but I wanna get enough of that sort of uh, watermark distress if you like. So then I'm just gonna use my heat gun, here it is, oh, look at me prepared, just to dry them drops. Now, if you want the drops to, let me turn off, if you want the drops to move and you want that sort of um, splodge effect, then chase the drops with your heat gun at an angle and push the drops. But if you want them to stay as they are, just apply the heat from the top and try not to move around too much. Just apply the heat and allow it to dry. And then you get the most beautiful motley effects. I love it. just around the edge so that is ready to go so right now what I'm going to do is come back to my project so what I've done here is I've popped that at a jaunty angle this is just over half the size but I've left a smaller bit at the top larger bit at the bottom so now I'm going to take some of my stencils I am going to go for this one you know I do love this stencil it's beautiful and what I'm going to do is I'll tuck it under there and then I'll tape it down with a little bit of low tack tape now I'm going to go right over that whole side and I'm going to pick up my peacock feather again absolutely beautiful go straight on this time I'm not dabbing off any excess and I'm going right in over all of the layers. Don't worry about the layers. It will take care of itself. So let's have a look at that now. Beautiful. And see how it even goes over the black. Fab. Absolutely fabulous. So now what I'm going to do is I'm also going to take the brilliant fishnet it's one of my favorites I love it and I'm just going to change my door for now and I'm gonna go on with some antique paper I'm just gonna grab a bit of low tack tape just because otherwise it would just squidge so there we go perfect I'll just pop that under there to keep that there so I'm gonna pick up using my old paper now And because there's such movement in this, it just is brilliant because you can use partial pieces of the stencil or you can just go for the whole thing. Now, I think if you see uh, the papers on the show, it just didn't justify them on the pack shot, I think. So you probably thought that it was a bit dark, maybe, but the kit really isn't. It's absolutely stunning. So I've just added that little bit of effect just on that edge. So now, again, pop this to the side for a minute. We're gonna do some painting. So I've already pre-stamped and cut out the um, three of the shells and of course, out at sea. And I've used a like cookie cutter die to give it a crinkled edge, just a little. So let me just grab my paint brushes and I'm gonna be using the Himmy Moist watercolour palette okay so let's start I'm going to take my fine round brush these are also part of the Hemi collection and let's have a look I'm going to go straight into my blue take that into the middle a little bit of water pick up the white add that into so now I'm just going to start at the bottom 
and I'm just going to build up some colour. So I'm not doing all of it, I'm just doing sort of partial areas. And you'll see as we build this up how it is just so stunning. I mean, these could be little rainbows if you wanted, couldn't they? Fabulous. So I'm going back in the blue, the lighter blue, and I'm adding it to my green now. So now it's just that bit of blue on there as well. And then I'm just carrying on, filling in colour. Not all, because we want to build up that colour. But you can see how you can just, oh, it's almost bubbly frothy, isn't it? So cute. Right, so now I'm gonna go into my darker blue and I just put a tad of water on that brush. I didn't actually soak it into that same color that we started with. And again, now we are just building up all of them different gorgeous colors. Fab, absolutely fabulous. Right, so now I'm gonna go back in that white, add that to that base color that we started with. And we will just carry on filling in them areas now. Now don't worry if you go over any of the actual dark black bits because we're gonna do ink work over the top. Sorry, did you hear my tummy rumble? That was really loud. Right. Love these. Now I'm gonna go in a tad of lilac, the lighter purple on the palette. And I'm just gonna pick up that middle. Now I'm gonna take that over there. A bit of purple. This is actually one of the demos that I wanted to do in the um, third hour, but obviously we didn't get to do it, but it doesn't matter because I can show you it now, personally just for you. <laughs> so I'm just filling in that colour, grab a little bit more lilac, just take it right up to the edge. Nicely covered, lovely, into a bit of water. I'm gonna come up with some yellow now. And again, I'm just gonna mix it over here. I'll just take a clean brush, make sure I get some of that color off my white. There we go, in there, a little bit more into there. A little bit of the brighter yellow, mix them on. Now you can just wipe this off with a wet cloth after. So now I'm just gonna exaggerate some of that color. Now this is quite a dry brush I've got. I seem to be moving up the table. And I'm gonna put most of the color at the source of the light. See that? And I'm gonna go back into that brighter yellow now. Just accentuate that colour. Wet brush. Drag that colour out. You may need a little, little flitter. There we go. I'm gonna go back in the yellow. I'm just gonna do a couple of the stars. We don't need to do all of them. Lovely. Now I'm going to go in, let's have a look at this orangey red, I think. And I'm just doing the very edges of the stripes. Um, the reason why is because I don't want it to be a really strong colour. So this will help it set to the back a bit. 
and our wet brush. Just exaggerate that colour into the middle. It just makes it a lot softer without um, overpowering, if you like. On the top, lovely. So I'm just going to dry that quickly. Now I'm going to come into my old paper. Hopefully you can see. Move that out of the way a bit. There we go. I always seem to move the wrong way. Right, okay, so now I'm just using that old paper, just a little bit around the edge. You can go over onto the design, onto the um, painting you've done already. Lovely. Now I'm just going to pick up a little tad of that peacock feather. You can see I've got it on an angle, so it's just almost like just, just whispering by on that edge. There we go. I'm just going to add a little bit on there. Fan brush again, just around that edge, not everywhere. side for a second and we're going to come to our shells oh, I absolutely love painting shells it's so crazy isn't it right I'm going to go into this lovely blue that we've already created and basically you see these darker lines I'm going to use them as my guide and I'm just going to do darker at the bottom and then bring that color up and see how I'm not pushing on the paper it's almost just flicks Flicks of paint, that's all you need to do. So up, just bring this darker down there with the shadows. Lovely, so I'm gonna go into that purple that we created as well before. I'm just going to lay some of that down as well. Just follow the lines. I'm going to go in a little bit of pink. I'm just going to mix in pinks. Just working lines with shells. Bit of water. Bring some of that colour down. Okay. So 
so now we're going to come on to our beautiful round shell so I'm going to go on the purple first of all and I'm just going to put the bulk of my colour on the lines that go round Okay, nice and simple, just follow them lines. There we go. Right. So now I'm going to go into that bluey green that we was creating before. And now I'm just going to trace that line that we previously done with the lilac. Now with a little tad of the blue. it's up to you whether you want to put light in or um, you don't it's completely up to you but I'm just going to go in a little tad of green and bring that in and I'm going to use that as my shine colour just blend it away with that green. So I'm just going to dry that. Now I'm coming back in with a white pen. This is, no, it's not a white pen at all, is it, Carly? It's a white pencil, but this is a watercolour white pencil. And I'm just going to make it a bit smoother. There we go. Gonna come back to this one now. And I'm gonna use that pencil again just to bring in some light on there. Lovely, that one's still a bit wet. I'll dry that in a second. Now this one, I'm gonna go in my blue into that green that we made already. And again, the darker areas are there. You've got them all ready lined out. So all you're doing is doing the tops and the bottoms. You can see how that's how you get your shine. And then we fill it with a different colour, but not too much. So I'm just adding a little bit of yellow and see how it blends effortlessly. Say it properly, Carly, get your words out. There we go, so let's try these off. Right, let's move this paint out of the way and get things cooking. Right, let's have a look what we got. So we're gonna come back to our canvas now. And I've done that stencil, done that one, done that one. Now we are going to start positioning. So I've got my two pieces already. I'm going to add in that fabulous compass that we've already done the artwork on. Again, just a slight little angle, not too much. And um, I'm also, I've cut out one of these brilliant um, lighthouses. Now, I don't want it too much to the foreground. I want it more in the background. So I am just going to place it about there, just slightly over, like so. I'm going to take that brilliant, fabulous compass that we've done. And that is actually going to go here. There we go, just behind there. So you still get to see all the bubbles. Um, again, I've taken the paper and I've cut some flowers. Super simple. And I'm just connecting them layers now with the flowers. Down here, I've got more flowers. I'm going to add them in. The cats come in. Hello, Doris. So we just place that. And then what you can do is you can put... Uh, pick this up, give it a little squish, make it look a bit more 3D. 
I've got another flowers. This is how you can continue them as well. They're really easy to place together. I've got smaller flowers I'm going to pop in here. There we go. Nice and easy. Give that a little bit of movement. Just move these bits out of the way. So then we have these beautiful shells that we've created already. And let's have a look. I want to pop that there and I want to pop this here. Now let me just turn on my glue gun because I've got some other bits that I would like to add to this. So I'm just using foam pads and again you can just pop it where you like. Just see how it fits actually. That's going to go there isn't it? Now I've got one of these flowers and I've cut the inside of it out. So now I can decoupage that and make it loads more 3D. Now where's that pretty little shell we had here? One that we've just painted. And this one I think should go up here. Perfect. So now, um, let me just check my glue gun. I've got some shells and I've got a sentiment. So I'm just going to place that out of the way and I'll just move these and my gems because now I've got a um, MDF chipboard um, piece that I've used and I've primed it already with um, acrylic. Or you can use, you know, whatever you prefer, but sometimes it's just easy to a bit of acrylic. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to stamp on top of this design using the weathered wood. So I'll get all them lovely grains on it. So I'm just going to pop that over there. Doris, get off the table. The cat's on the table. Sorry if she just bumps into her, anything. Right, take that off there. And I'm going on with the Distress Oxide in Peacock, absolute favourite ink. And I'm just going to stamp over the top of that sentiment. You can add more, you can turn it and add more if you want, different directions. Place that out the way like this. See, now I'm just going to heat set that. There we go. Hopefully, my gun's warming up. Are we getting there? Nearly. Oh dear. So now I've got my sentiment to go on. Lovely. I've got some shells to go on, some real shells that I thought would look nice. Let's have a look. Where was that? That one was there. And then that one was there. Then I'm just going to add a few little gems. just to use up and make these pop, all these individual elements that we've created. So come on. Yes, we have glue. Lovely. sentiment you don't need a lot of hot glue on these don't do it on every letter just basically 
the bottoms really and a couple in the top so would you get too many strings so let's have a look oh do you know I'm just gonna let's see I think it needs to go here so we're gonna go right over all of them layers now adding in that sentiment I'm just going to take a little bit of ink and just finish off. It's, this is purely the ink that is left on my mat. Because you know I don't like to waste. And I'm just going to go over a little bit around that shell. See, I may need to pick up a tad. I'm just gonna, there we go. Just on that edge. Lovely. There we go. Right, let's have a look. Hiya, how are you doing? <laughs> you ready? You want to see it? I hope you really enjoyed me making this. There we go. It's a corker, isn't it? So again, I have used the beautiful stamps from the brand new chapter 12. Hi, Kirsty, you are right, sweet? Oh, thanks, Helen. Not as gorgeous as you. <laughs> Hi, Maxie. Um, so we have, we've got the seashells in there. We've got the compass. We've also got that out at sea. I've used the stencils and the papers. Now, every single person that has commented on this Facebook Live, so not on the reruns, not when you're watching it later, um, you are in for a chance of winning this brilliant canvas. Now, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, give you all a number and then I will pop it into a random generator and I will let you know later, okay? Thank you so much for joining me today and I will be sending this out tomorrow to someone. It's so exciting. Um, I hope you have a great day, my fellow artisans. I'll take some pictures of this when it's dry and um, so you'll be able to see some lovely close-ups. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great day. Look after yourself and of course your families as well. Take care my friends and I will see you soon. See you later. Bye.